Hello, welcome to United Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor John Bischoff. Welcome to our second episode in our fall Bible study that we are calling Our Faith, Your Vote. During this time, we are going to be looking at different topics that uh, typically come up during election cycles here in the United States. Last week, we did a series on the environment, looking at it from a biblical standpoint, and today we're going to look at health care issues from a biblical standpoint. So thank you for joining us today. So we have to admit that there are no specific biblical texts that call for things such as insurance, private or public health care, or even hospitals. We can see and hear, though, in many of the stories of Jesus, how he heals all who came to him with physical and mental health needs. Throughout the Gospels, we find over 40 stories of various healings performed by Jesus. In fact, healings are by far the most common type of miracle that Jesus performs. In Mark's Gospel, the first three chapters describe the start of Jesus' earthly ministry. We see how healing people who are in need of help is the most common theme or action for Jesus as he begins these earthly ministries. It's as if the author of this gospel wants us to know that healing and health care and caring for others is a key element in the Christian faith and life. Over the first three chapters, there is the healing of a man who with an unclean spirit. Jesus heals the many people who are at Simon's house. Jesus heals the man with leprosy, the paralytic, and the man with the withered hand. If we want to model our lives around Jesus and his ministry, then I think we truly have to believe that what Jesus does is important, healing others. If we take seriously Jesus' call to love others as he loves us, then healing others, providing health care, and advocating for good health care, especially for those who are in need, is an extremely important part of our Christian faith and identity. Jesus' ministry is built on healing others. A reading from Mark chapter 6, verses, one through, or verses 7 through 13. Jesus called the twelve disciples and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over all the unclean spirits. Jesus ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. Jesus said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. And if any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So the disciples went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. In this reading, we hear Jesus tell the disciples what their mission is to be. It's to go out and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God and to heal people that they are with. We see how healing is, and health care are important in the Christian vocation. Healing and health care used to be a major vocation and ministry within the church. Most of our early hospitals and health care systems were started, run, and supported by the church. This church provided health care was often provided for free or at very low cost. In the book of James, we hear these words. Is any one of you suffering? They should pray. Is anyone cheerful? They should sing praises. Is any one of you sick? They should call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. You see, health care and healing people was a very important part of the early Christian church. It's also important to recognize who Jesus heals. Jesus heals everyone. Jesus heals men and women. Jesus heals fellow Jews along with the Romans, the Gentiles, and the Samaritans. Jesus heals those who are considered a part of his society, 
along with healing those who were considered aliens, immigrants, and outsiders. Jesus heals people even when the leaders of the synagogue tell him not to because they believe that healing others on the Sabbath was against the law. But Jesus knew healing was important, no matter who or what time. Now it's true, as I mentioned before, there are no biblical mandates for government-provided health care or free or subsidized health care. But when we read the Bible, we see a strong theme that, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we are being called all the time to help those who are in need, to advocate for policies that create health care options and programs for those who are sick, regardless of who they are or where they come from or their employment status or even if they can afford it. As Christians, we can call upon both governmental agencies and church organizations to support health care options that serve all of God's people. So why did Jesus heal those whom he met? It's because Jesus loves all people. Jesus has compassion on those who are suffering. Jesus healed because Jesus saw how when one person is, is sick, when one person is not well, it affects the whole community. So by healing others, by providing health care opportunities for those in need, Jesus was able to not only heal that person, but also heal and strengthen the community in which that person resided. Through his actions, Jesus teaches us to do the same. A reading from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. A lawyer stood up to test Jesus, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? The man answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hand of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was, doing, was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side as well. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you've spent. Jesus said, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell to the hand of robbers? The man answered, The one who showed mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Let me end with a reading from Matthew chapter 25. Then, the, then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king answered, Truly I tell you, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Healing and caring for others is the same as healing and caring for Jesus, because Jesus is in each and every human being. We are a part of the body of Christ. We call this the incarnation. To heal and to care for others when they are in need is an outward sign of our faith in Christ. It shows the world who we are as Christians and it also shows the world whose we are. For we belong to a compassionate, loving, and merciful God who wants nothing but the best for all of us. So as Christians, it's important for us to advocate for, 
to support and encourage healthcare options, systems, and programs that care for all people, especially those who are most at risk and least able to receive quality health care. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that you have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless.